yesterday we were talking about Bayesian networks and we saw they are directed as cyclic graphs where the nodes represent these random variables and the edges indicate dependence and we came up with this rule of uh, which the Bayesian network actually encodes which is any for any given random variable it is independent of its non descendants uh, given its parents right so that's the rule that we came up with today we'll move on to something known as i maps and that's the last topic that we'll do in uh, directed graphical models uh, or bayesian networks uh, of course this is uh, i mean directed and undirected graphical models as a separate course in the department so i'm not going to cover everything I'm going to cover the bare minimum that we need uh, to reach our eventual goal, which is RBMs. So yesterday's lecture was to get you started in thinking in terms of probability distributions, what are joint conditional probability. The last two lectures were meant for that. And from there, uh, we now slowly start moving towards undirected graphical models or also known as Markov networks. And from there, hopefully eventually reach RBMs. Right? So our goal is RBMs, our goal is not probabilistic graphical model. Okay, so let's move on to I maps. Uh, so let P be a joint distribution over random variables x1 to xn and then we can define IP uh, as the set of independence assumptions that hold in P, right? Or in fact, not assumptions, independence relations that hold in P. Okay, so for example, IP could be G is independent of S given I comma D uh, G is independent of I and so on, I mean sorry, uh, L is independent of I and things like that, right? So it could be all the independence assumptions that your probability distribution has. Remember at this point I am not talking about the Bayesian network, I am only talking about the distribution. A distribution can exist irrespective of the Bayesian network, right? The Bayesian network is a framework that you chose to represent the distribution, but it is not always tied to a distribution. A distribution is independent of that, right? Uh, and each element in this set of IP would be of the following form where you will have xi is independent of xj given some z where z is a subset of x minus xi comma xj right and this this i'm not sure i think it should be uh, this is the the forward slash is the thing to use there right so it's or maybe the backward slash uh, just check once how do you say x minus xi xj i think it's the backward slash backslash right yeah okay so x minus xi and xj so, in particular, Z could also be the empty set, in which case XI is just independent of XJ, unconditional, right? It just happens to be independent, okay. Now, consider the graph G and let IG be the independence assumptions associated with this graph or Bayesian network, okay. So, we then say that the graph is an I map for the probability distribution if IG is a subset of IP. That, what does that mean actually? The graph exactly captures all the independences which are there in the distribution. Is that what it means? Then what does it mean? Subset. So it means that the graph is not going to mislead us about independences in P, right? It will not have any independence which does not exist in P, right? So anything that the graph tells us will hold in P for sure. But in addition, P could have additional independences also, right? That's fine. But at least the graph will not come up with independences which do not exist in the original distribution. So it will be faithful to the original distribution. It might have some shortcomings, but it is not at least going to be wrong in the other direction, right? Okay. Now consider this joint distribution over x comma y, right? So here is one distribution. Now we need to find a g which is an I map for this joint distribution. So how will we go about that? So when I say we need a g, what do I mean? A graph, right? Now I want to draw a graph which is an I map for this distribution. Is that hard, easy, a clique? Uh, for two variables, how will you go about finding an I map? What does the I map have to satisfy? We just defined it in the previous slide. What, is, what does the I map say? The independences encoded in the graph should be a subset of the independences in the distribution. Okay. So what do you need to get first? Independences in the distribution. What are the independences which hold in this distribution? What are the possible independences which can hold in this distribution? X is independent of Y. Is it true? How will you verify that? Find the marginals, okay. But what do you do with the marginals? What will you check? Product of the, uh, is equal to the joint distribution. 
So, what does this mean actually? I think this is what you guys are saying, right? What does this mean? For every value that x and y can take, the probability of x equal to x, comma y is equal to y is equal to probability of x equal to x, y equal to y, right? That is what you mean, right? Okay. So, can you verify that easily? Okay. And uh, so, here there are only two possibilities. Either the uh, independence is associated with the distribution is x independent of y or it is a null set, one of these two things. And from the table we can easily check that this condition holds, that is why the i p is x is independent of y. Now, given that this is i p, what is the graph that you will draw? So, there are three options, right? with two nodes there are only these three options or in fact there is one more option. right? Oh. So, what have we done? Okay. So, last one should not have an edge. So, the first one says x to y, the second one says y to x okay. and the third one says there is no edge. So, which of these is an I map for this distribution? Which one? What is the independence which the third one encodes? Third one there is no edge. So, what does it in encode? What about the first two? What is i g in the first case? So, this is this an i map for the distribution? No. What is the definition? Subset. The null set is a subset of any set, right? So, all three of them are actually i maps. Is that fine? Okay. So, now this is just a toy example to falsely make you think that for any distribution you can easily come up with an i map. That is what we think, right? Could there be cases where we cannot come up with an IMAP? Why? Why would that happen? Okay. So, in practice, we do not know P and hence we cannot compute IP, right? We computed IP because someone had given us the table. From the table, we looked up P of X, P of Y, and then found out that X is independent of Y using the product rule, right? But that is the whole point, right? This table is not going to be given to you in the case of real world examples, right? Because in real world, you would not have two variables. There are many, many variables. So, this table is not known to us in many cases. Now, what we do in real world is that we just make some assumptions about IP. So, this is what we did in our student example, right? We wanted to learn this joint distribution of student grade, uh, SAT score, difficulty, intelligence, and so on. And we made some independence assumptions. We said, okay, I think these are the independence assumptions which hold in this distribution, which makes sense to me. And we also saw some counter examples where we could have made a different set of assumptions where we could have said the recommendation letter actually also depends on the SAT score. It also depend on, depends on the advice taken from the colleague of the professor or it also depends on the mood of the professor and so on. right? So, those were all our assumptions. Based on those assumptions, we first came up with the random variables which are relevant to our world and then came up with some independence assumptions. And based on those assumptions, we drew a graph such that the graph was a subset of all the assumptions that we had in mind, right? So, that is the difference between what this toy example was trying to show you and what we do in real world, okay? So, why do we care about I maps actually? Say for a very complex distribution, I gave you an I map, that means I gave you a graph such that the independences encoded in the graph are a subset of the independences encoded in the distribution. What will you do with that? What will that ensure? In the absence of any independence assumption, what is the factorization of a joint distribution? What do we always start with while factorizing a joint distribution? What is that one rule? So, in the absence of that, we always use the chain rule. Now, if I give you an I map, what will you do? So, now you know some independences and then what will happen? The factorization will. So, that happens because if G is an I map for a joint distribution P, then P factorizes over G. That means that P can be expressed as a product of all the conditional probability distributions which are associated with G, conditional or marginal distribution, right? So, remember when I give you a graph, a Bayesian network, I do not give you the edges, I mean I just do not give you the uh, nodes and the edges. There is also a conditional probability distribution associated with each node. Of course, in practice we will have to learn that, but we will assume that we have learned that somehow. And once we have those conditional and marginal tables, we know that the actual joint distribution factorizes over these conditional and marginal distribution. Does that make sense? There is nothing new that I am saying, I am just putting it in a different light, right? We already saw this that if you have a Bayesian network, 
you can write the joint probability distribution as a factor of all the conditional probability distributions and the marginal distributions associated with the Bayesian network, right. And now instead of just saying that there is one unique Bayesian network, I am saying that there could be many I maps, right, each of each, each of uh, which have this property that the independences encoded in them are a subset of the independences in the joint distribution. And once I tell you that, you can go ahead and boldly write the joint distribution as a factorization of the conditional and marginal distributions. How many of you get this statement? Please raise your hands. So here are two theorems on Bayesian networks. The first one tells you that if G is a Bayesian network over a set of random variables X and P is a joint distribution of these random variables, then if G is an I map for P, then P factorizes according to G, right. And the second theorem is the converse of this that if P factorizes according to G, then G is an I map of P, okay. So, you can get back and check these two theorems. Uh, I am not going to ask you these just as I did not ask Stein's lemma last year. So, you can go back and check take a look at these and it will just help you in improving your understanding, right. So, this is why I maps are important. So, the purpose of this module to was to show you that once you have an I map, you can find the factorization of a joint distribution. And throughout this entire discussion of Bayesian networks, there are two things which have been important. One is, or two or three maybe, one is that the chain rule gives you a natural, gives you the most uh, default factorization for a joint distribution. Our aim was to simplify the chain rule and that happens only if you bring in certain conditional independence assumptions, right. And these conditional independence assumptions are things that we encoded in the Bayesian network and we saw the formal semantics of the Bayesian network which said that xi is independent of its non-descendants given its parents, right. So, that one rule allows us to simplify a lot of things in the joint distribution and that is why we always care about independence relations. We always want to find which are the things which are independent. And lastly, we saw that there is, if someone gave us an I map, we can just go ahead and factorize the joint distribution according to the I map, okay. So, these are the main things that uh, we wanted to learn from this lecture.